In this video, we're going to focus on the mouse move event and how you can have multiple. For example, right now, if I hover over this part here, you can see here the X scale is negative. It will give us a negative text here. But if I move here now, sorry, to the positive range, in that moment, it becomes positive. So if I move between these two, you can see here it changes consistently. So let's start to explore how to do this functionality. So let's start to look how to add two mouse move hover effects in Chart.js. The first thing what we need to do is we need to get our default code, which is in chartjs 3com getting started, this specific link here, which you can also find in the description box. So once you are on the site, scroll down here and just copy this entire chunk of code here. There we are. Let's copy that. And if you want to know what this code does, make sure you watch this video that explains it all. So then I will just paste this all in here. And once I did that, I will cut out this title and put the title in here. And there we are. Play, save, refresh. All right, so now we have this. And what I want to do now is create a Hoover effect. And the Hoover effect will be, well, we can just put in here some other numbers. I'm going to put in here some numbers. Maybe let's say make a line chart out of it. Or a, um, I guess a scatter chart is more appropriate. Scatter chart. And then we're going to change here these items. So what I will do here is we're going to put an X and Y coordinate. So here we say X3, Y3, and then I'll put a comma and copy this multiple times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. All right. So you have here, what I want to do here is, well, this is three, but I want to do this negative. This is a negative. There's a negative. There we are. Negative, zero, three. All right. And then we have a six. I'll put a six negative and here nine same here i'm going to do nine six and that's three zero maybe negative three negative six and here maybe eight negative three again so if i refresh now we have now a bit of a difference in here so it looks beautiful so what i really want to do here is to highlight that if we hover over one Part, which is the positive part, then in that case, we will show the value of positive. And if we move on the negative side, it show negative. And the reason why I'm showing that is because a mouse move positioning works basically on the coordinates on this. It's just one function, but with an if statement or like dependent only within a specific area. So that's very important to understand. So let's start to do something right now to create it. So what I'm going to do here, put in some enters, and then I'm going to say a function, and this will be our mouse move handler. And this is our basic function, and I'm going to work on it later on. So we have this, I'll put in some extra enters here, and then I'm going to say here the following. I'm going to say here, because we want to activate this, so I'm going to say here my chart, which is basically the object here. But this is the full object, including all the drawing. I don't want that, so I say my chart, dot canvas this is very important because we want to pinpoint the canvas or the id of that element then we say your dot at event listener and then we're going to say here what what event would we like to do well in our case it's a mouse move many people think it's a hoover but no don't don't get confused with hoover mouse move will indicate basically the coordinates where we are well, a hoover is just on the canvas. Are you on the canvas? Yes. So if you're on the canvas, no matter where on the canvas we hoover, it will always be yes until we're hovering away from the canvas. So because the canvas is basically this entire block of code here. So that's why it's a mouse move. So we get the coordinates, we can compare the coordinates. So then once we have that, I want to as well the event here, and I want to trigger this event. So we can record that event and element at the same time. So we say mouse move. When we do that, what do we do? We want to trigger the specific function, which is the mouse move handler. And then here, we're going to put in two parameters. First one is the my chart. We're going to grab this, put it in here, comma. And next one is the event itself, event and the element itself. So comma of the event. So then what we're going to do here is if I do a control log, if I just say here now, yes, save that, refresh, you should see here now in the console log, we get a yes effect. All right, as you can see here, it doesn't dis distinguish 
anything else because it's just default yes and you can see here the trigger if the condition is always met because we are moving within the canvas if i move here it doesn't work anymore you can see here it did some loading at the time but eventually it stops all right so we're getting there so now what i want to do is because these are what we call our arguments so we need to put it here as a parameter so i'm going to give it a proper name chart comma and i'm going to say here instead of e i'm just going to grab the mouse move that's a nice term so now if i do this and i say here chart you will see we just get the full chart object go right here uh all right you can see it's very heavy there we are and then we get everything here of the chart so beautiful but of course this is not necessary for us mouse move same story by the way save refresh let's do that there we are you can see here the exact coordinates we get and we need to calculate the proper coordinates in relationship with the window size or the, the the inner window so this is very important so let's start to do that let's get our mouse coordinates now to do this i'm going to do here what we call an object destructuring we're going to say constant and this constant we will grab a few items so we're going to say constant chart because it was the entire chart object remember but then what i want to do here is i want to grab here only the canvas then comma i will have here the scales as well so it's not necessary but the skills is in our example essential so x and y so now we have this here then what i want to do here now is i want to calculate the exact coordinates of our item here specifically our mouse coordinates so to do that what i'm going to do here is constant i'm going to say a rec and basically the rec is the rectangle shape of this which will calculate in comparison with this well not even this but the entire html which will mean from here goes all up to the top here because that's the starting point of the html on a, a vertical level but also if i go from here going back uh, to here at the very beginning as you can see here well i will just stop the specter element from here all the way back to here and that it needs to calculate so we can calculate the exact coordinates of it so for that we need to do here canvas dot get bounding client rec so this is a canvas command or not even a canvas it's probably a javascript command as well but it will grab it will calculate the position of it in relationship how many pixels are we located from each other so then what i want to do here is a constant i want to say here the x cursor to get the coordinates of it you might say why don't we just give the x value well the reason why we don't do the x value is because we have here something that already consists of the term x and y if not we will overrule that and it will get, create a error or confusion so that's why x cursor then we're going to say here this will be mouse move which is basically the objects in here the object value of this but then here specifically dot client x and a minus the rectangle but then dot left to calculate the difference between the position of the canvas and the left side so if i refresh this oh you don't see of course anything yet because we need to do a console log so we do a console log here to log out or to log the mouse cursor save that refresh you can see here this is correct and you will see the following so if you can see here the width if you look at up in the tooltip the width is 700 pixels so if i would go here all to this point this would be close to zero pixels and sometimes there might be a tiny margin of error of one or two pixels but that's quite acceptable for my case so i go here uh the console log say here all right i'm going more and more and more and eventually zero all right so it's exactly zero and then we should be at the other side should be 699 so that's all right it should supposed to be 700 but 699 is very acceptable because one pixel difference is hard to notice we're going to copy this do exactly the same here but now on the y cursor and then of course say client y and of course this is vertical so we say top save that and then if i just say here uh let's wait object destruct no not say uh, template literals so i'm going to use back ticks back ticks on your computer or on your keyboard or at least on the mac it's below the escape button so you say dollar sign variable here so easy concatenation and then and y equals this so here the y cursor and then we say here x save all right so now if i uh 
yeah, basically look at the console and hover over your mouse over on our item or mouse move on it, you will see here the exact coordinates here, which is absolutely beautiful. All right, so now we have this, but now what I want to do is I want to make here a element in here that will say positive or negative. So I'm going to say here just a simple paragraph. I'm going to give it a simple ID, but of course you can do so many different things. But my, my goal is to demonstrate how this truly works. So say your text, this text is blank, but the ID is this, and then what I'm going to say here is eventually the following. We say if, and then what I want to do is I want to compare if our cursor would be bigger or equal to, and then what I want to do is if we are here or if we are on the zero line or surpassing it, we're going to say this is positive. And if not, then later on we're going to say it's negative. So I'm going to say here this, and then say here, uh, is. So how do we get the exact pixel coordinates on the X and Y? That's why we have to scale at this object here. So we're going to say here, X dot get pixel for value, and it should be surpassing or equal to zero, which is the positive item. So if that is the case, I'm going to say here, console law positive, and I'm going to just comment out that one. Save, refresh. All right, so let's see what happened now. Now it's positive. And if I move here, you, as you can see here, the moment here is still minus, 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 and then here, there we are. This works. So if we're moving here, it doesn't work. All right, so then what I want to do is the following. I'm going to say here, document dot get element by ID, and I'm going to put that in the paragraph I just had up. And the ID name was text, if I'm not mistaken. Let's double check. This ID name, paragraph text. And then I'm going to say a dot inner text equals positive. Save that. So now as you can see here, now this works. Of course here, it doesn't work yet. So what we're going to do now is exactly the same, except just different condition. This is basically how you can put in multiple mouse move hovering effects on chart.js. So what I'm going to do here is exactly the opposite. I'm going to say here, if it is below the x of zero, in that case, it's negative. And I guess we can just remove this console log. That will be all redundant. We can just say here, negative, save, refresh, positive. All right, and then you go here, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And there you are. So with this, if you define the hovering effect or the mouse move coordinates, basically where it should, where it should trigger. In that case, you can create as many different functions with uh, or many multiple effects we could do so much more here with not an if statement if you are here above in that case do something else but for that i'm going to recommend you to understand the chart area i didn't use your chart area but i have a nice video for that i'm going to recommend you this one understanding the chart area once you understand this you will understand as well more how to play around with the pixel coordinates within the uh, chart yes or in the canvas